Hello, this is Linda with Traveling Flamingo. Congratulations on registering for your Run Disney weekend. Today, this is going to be the first video in our Run Disney series. I'm going to go over some tips for what you need to do now that you've registered and different strategies that you might want to employ as you start your training. So we've participated in a few Run Disney events. Our first one we did was the half marathon at the Run Disney weekend. Then we did the Tower of Terror 10 miler, which they don't offer that anymore. And the last two years, my sister has, and I have done the Dopey Challenges and we did the Goofy Challenge as well. So I'm talking from a little bit of experience here. What we really love about all the Run Disney events is that there's so much energy, the theming is amazing, and they've got a lot of great materials and um, stuff that you can purchase at the Running Expo, which aren't always available at some of our smaller Canadian runs. If I lived in Orlando, I would definitely be participating in far more of the Run Disney events. And before I start, I'd like to give a shout out to all the volunteers. I know my alarm is going off at 2, two o'clock, 2.30 in the morning. I can't imagine what time your alarm is going off to be greeting us there as soon as we get off the buses. With all your energy, the whole way through the morning, you guys are amazing. Thank you so much to all the volunteers. So let's get into our tips. My first tip is make sure you book your hotel. Coming from out of town, we found it best to stay on property. Uh, they provide shuttle buses from all the hotels to the, run, the running start as well as the race expo. If you've ever stayed off property and driven in or got a cabin, we'd love to hear about your experience with that. It's a pretty big run, 26,000 plus people doing the marathon. So I don't know what it's like trying to get in and get parking. Uh, for us, our, one of our main criteria was that it was near the monorail. This is so that way we have a lot of different food options as well. One year we stayed at the, at the Animal Kingdom. Love the Animal Kingdom. The pool is amazing. There's a lot to do there. But there isn't a lot of food that is in our regular diet. And when you're about to run a marathon, you don't really like to experiment with different foods. So for us staying near the monorail loop, had, we had more options that are closer to our regular diet. We find that staying at the Wilderness Lodge, the best option, it's a great hotel without the same price as staying at the Contemporary, the Poly, or the Grand, but we still have access to all their food just by taking a short boat ride over. It, another option would be staying near Epcot. Um, definitely, if we had a season's pass, staying somewhere on Boardwalk or around there, because that way you could just go into Epcot for dinner and that would be really awesome as well. So if you've ever done that, let us know how that goes, but I think that would be a really good option as well. My second tip is start planning your costume. It's amazing some of the costumes that people come up with. They are so creative. It's unbelievable. It really makes the run something special and not something that you can do in all different, in a lot of other runs. So one of the most extravagant costumes that I ever saw was a guy running with a tuba. It was amazing. He did the full marathon carrying the tuba. That was nuts. I like to stick to things that are simple and comfortable. The first year, my sister and I, we dropped up as Minnie Mouse, so we had bought mini skirts on Etsy, t-shirts, and we had mini hats. The last two times, we did a partner costume of Winnie the Pooh and Piglet, again using tutus, hats, and t-shirts. I mean, some of the group costumes get really creative. We saw a five-person monorail. We've seen the seven dwarfs. Like, it's really great. So the time does sneak up on you, especially as you're getting into that Christmas, holiday, New Year season. So start thinking about what costume you might want to do now. A lot of people would also recommend doing some trial runs in your costume. I never practiced running down the street in my tutu, uh, but I did make sure my t-shirt was comfortable and not rubbing me in weird places. My last tip would be figuring out your training schedule. There's lots of schedules online that you can follow if you're training up for a marathon. Disney also offers some running programs that you can follow. Depending on if you're doing one run or multiple runs will affect your training schedule. So I found coming with myself, I have a lot of my own injuries. Running a marathon is unbelievable, let alone doing an ultra marathon. Same with my sister, that we sort of mashed everything together to find the best for us. So we did one long run a week one day of interval running and three days of CrossFit. This allowed us to get the volume and back-to-back -back training without putting too much pressure on our knees or back and our ankles. You definitely want to start early, figure out what's going to work for you, and maybe you need to be putting stuff together like we did. That being said, we've met a lot of people who didn't train as much as they wanted to. You know, you talk to a lot of people there, they share their stories. 
and they're really nervous because you know oh, I've only you know done a 15k run we're running a marathon like how's that gonna go um, and you get through it there's a lot of people there supporting you and pushing you on and um, you know you finish it but it's gonna be painful so our plan was to try and enjoy it and finish and enjoy it as much as possible and the more training you can do the more that you'll enjoy that so we are a new channel if you have anything to say please put it in the comments below good bad we're open to it all to hear more of our Run Disney series, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and good luck with your training.